Today, I want to teach you something. My message will be very small because I wish to pray for you. Amen. Let's read uh, Second Samuel. I read Samuel. Samuel chapter 16. Chapter 16. Let's read from verse 5. Read from Second Samuel chapter 16, verse 5. Yes. When King David came to Bahurim, a man named Shimei, the son of Gera, came out from there. He was of the family of Saul's household and he was cursing continually. And he came out. He threw stones at David at, and at all the servants of the king of King David. Yet all the people and all the warriors remained on his right and on his left. This is what she may send as he cursed. Get out, get out, you men of bloodshed, you worthless and useless men. The Lord has turned upon you all the blood, the bloodshed of the house of Saul, in whose place you have reigned. And the Lord has given the kingdom into the hands of Absalom, your son. And behold, you are caught in your own evil. For you are a man of bloodshed. Then Abishai, David's nephew, the son of Zeruah, said to King, Why should this dead dog, despicable person, curse my lord the king? Let me go over and talk of, took, take off his head. But the king said, What business is this of yours, O son? Of Zeria. If Shimei is cursing because the Lord said to him, Curse David, then who should say, Why have you done so? Then David said to Abishai and to all the servants, Look, my son Absalom, who came from my own body, is seeking my life. How much more, man meaning reason, now does the, this Benjamite have to curse me? Let him alone and let him curse, for it could be that the Lord has told him to do it. Perhaps the Lord will look on the wrong done to me by Shimei, if he is acting on his own. And in that case, perhaps the Lord will this day return good to me in place of his cursing. So David and his men went on the road. And Shimei went along on the hillside close beside David and cursed as he went and threw stones and dust at him. The king and all the people who were with him arrived at the Jordan River weary and he refreshed himself there. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I want you to understand the message I'm going to share with you. Because uh, I've been praying for you to understand it. I was asking God, if you are saying this, is how many will understand this message? I know God is going to open your understanding. We are in a year of God's mercy. And because of that, our God will be praised. Just write it down. God will be praised. Our God will be praised. When God gives you mercy. When God gives you 
what you don't deserve to have. Because of his mercy. People have to praise God. I was learning that praising God is not only singing songs. It's acknowledging God. Praising God is not different with worshiping God. But a realization or awareness of him or putting him where he belongs. That's what results when you praise God. Praising God, you put God where you go. When you praise God, you put him where you go. You put him where you go. So that is why you are not supposed to praise him. Because it's only God who has to be praised. I want to tell you something. When Jesus was entering Jerusalem, people were trying to silence people. They were shouting. They were screaming. They were screaming. The reason why? Because they saw of what they saw. It makes them to praise. It makes them not to be silent. But there were people who were saying, hey, keep fighting. And Jesus says, if these Jesus, words can keep quiet, the stones will shout. You know why Jesus was saying that? Jesus was saying the stones will have awareness of me. That I am the creator. And when they see me here, they will say, this one is the creator. This one is the one who created us. Listen, it becomes simple to understand how to converge your life to a level of making other people how to understand only God understands. Only God understands. You're living your life to praise Him. But here, I heard that it's only praises that you will hear this year. Because of your God. When they see what he wants to do with you, they will shout. I don't know if you're hearing it. God is about to be praised because of you. God is about to be praised because of you. Because of you. I will tell you why David did it. When we come to the scriptures. David was already understanding praises. The Bible says when he moved. Running away from Absalom. Remember that by the time of David. There was a competition. Those who were favorite Saul were going down. down. But the number of David was but rising the up. But the problem was now. The, the fight came from the house. The fight was not from outside. It was from inside the house. The son that was born wanted to destroy him. You know, it is not easy to face the fight from inside. But David was already having a sacred contest. A secret. That makes David not to say, kill him. 
He was supposed to have said, "Kill him." Na tamilo bula la rangkil bula yung mundo. Because the Bible says, "Kaur iri Bible." When he moved out, ay chwa. Shimei was throwing stones. Shimei alat na le masuika. Automatically he was searching. Ora ora na nyaka. What David will say? Na nyaka kaur David tauta tabo le la ringi. He was throwing dust. Na alat na le 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 David, who understand the Ark of the Covenant. And the Bible says when he was brought, he praised God. He shouted because of what he heard. What the Ark of Covenant did in the house of another man. When he was bringing it, the Bible says he undignified himself. I don't know if you're hearing me. Because he knew the one who who was representing the Ark of the Covenant. He understood that for it to come, it's mercy for him. And when he saw that, he began to praise. And he undignified himself. I don't know if you are hearing me. It is time to know that undignifying yourself is going to come to be your lifestyle before God. But it's a secret. Because it's a success that God has already organized for you. You are here in the church today being undignified just to praise Him because you understand that you have been given mercy for God to be praised. If you are hearing me say I am here to tell you 
you. That David, David tells mightly. The Bible says Michel was looking through the window. We can hear why David tells. When David answered Michel, he says, I was dancing before the Lord who puts me on this position. And he has removed your father. But Michel will say, how do you have to dignify yourself? He will say, I found mercy. My God took me from the bush and gave me the seat of your father. I can do more when I'm before God because I know my God is still going to be praised. There is something more that is about to happen if you are hearing me say I you. some of you are not hearing me but you hear me when I continue God has given God mercy to David to extend that he will not fight Shimei this is the time that we don't need to fight anyone because we understand the mercy that you have been given to us and the praises that many will utter is only the fools that will insult our God. It's only the fools that will stand against our God. It is time now to undignify ourselves because we know what is coming. We know what God is about to do. And we believe there are many people who are about to do this. To see what God, what He wants to do with your life, and they will praise Him. Listen to me, I'm hearing praises. I'm hearing praises here of things that are coming. I don't know if you're hearing me. I'm hearing praises because of the things that God wants to do. Already in heaven, there's a joy of the release of success that is coming to you. But there are some people who are still throwing dust, who are still throwing stones because they don't know that soon you will be refreshed. The Bible says when David reached Jordan, he was refreshed. Can I tell you some place? Listen to this. No matter what you are facing, there's a place you will reach and you will be refreshed. I'm sure when they reached there, though they were wearied, they began to say, God, you are God. You protected us to reach here. Our enemies will be left on the other side and will cross to go on the other side. It is only you, God, that will fight for us. I'm sure they were praising. I'm here to tell you, this week you will reach another place. When you reach that place, you will be refreshed. Your enemy will be far away from you. The language of talking about your enemy is over. It is time to praise him. I don't know if you are hearing me. It is time to praise him. Because your enemies, your friends, your family, they will all praise the living God. Because of what he wants to do for you. You know this man, Shimei. I don't understand why he did what he did. I believe God was teaching us today. There are many Shimei's here. There are many shimei where you are working. There are many shimei around in your family. When they look at you, they see that they need to curse you. They need to throw dust on you. They need to do what they can do. Just to undignify you. You will be undignified before the Lord. Not before them. The Lord will prepare a table of food before them. God is about to do something that will make them to praise your God. Even if you are hearing me say, I'm hearing you. 
I, I was learning, I want to show you something. And I want you to write this thing. I, I found that, you know, the word praise. Here, yeah, the first thing, it means to surrender. That is why we normally raise up our hands. That is why we surrender and it means praise. It means praise. The second one, it means you remain silent. Just be quiet before him. Be silent before him. And you kneel. Bowing before showing humility. That's praise. Because you, you acknowledge you know him. When you know him, it is easy for you to walk with praise. Bowing. Showing your humility. It is time now that when they are talking what they are talking, you bow. And lift up your hands. And praise him. And talk about him. You are God of heaven. You are the only God. There is no one like you. They are busy talking about you. You are busy seeing him. Listen, praise is taking you to the God. You must praise. But soon they will praise. When you are busy praising, you are commanding them to come and bow. Because every knee shall Every tongue shall come. Your enemies will do the same. I don't know if you're hearing me. So you kneel. You bow. You talk with him. You speak with him. When you are busy, you are declaring those who are against you to do the same. I don't know if you're hearing me. Listen, when you are kneeling down, and you are talking, God, you are, you are wonderful. You are mighty. You are righteous. You don't need to see a place and, and praise him, no. Even before you see, it, because you know it is coming. I don't know if you are hearing me. You don't praise him because of the blessing. You praise him because he is the one who deserves to receive the praise. Uh, I don't know if you are hearing me. But when you are busy, praising him, you are declaring those who are against you. Are declaring you are even when you are not talking about them, that they will do the same. To your God. I don't know if you are hearing me. And make them to do the same. I don't know if you are hearing me. So can you see how you fight your enemy? You don't fight your enemy by responding. You fight your enemy by praising him. When you are busy praising him, he will answer you. Now they will praise him. They will surrender. If you hear me say, Number three, I just want you to write what I'm saying. So I wrote also what I'm saying. I want to practice this. This is Number three, praise. Praise means forgiving. Praise means forgiving. When you praise, you forgive. Praise means forgiving. You cannot come before him without forgiving. I don't know if you're hearing me. If you still have issues with someone, solve it before you go to him. If you are still with him, your praises are half. They work against you. I don't know if you are hearing me. Praise, another praise. It means uh, soul rejoice. Soul rejoice. So if your soul is rejoicing, 
you know, there's a song that I love most of all. I wish you can sing songs like this. It will relieve the stress. And you carry on enjoying yourself before. You know the song that uh, the brothers were singing? I was singing this song. When I heard some people say, I'm a cultic person. I began to say, I'm a cultic person. I began to say, I'm a cultic person. My legs are very much dirty. The dirt always also destroys shoes. When Jesus comes, he will wash my feet. And he will place my feet on the place of victory. I began to forget what they were saying. I began, sometimes crash whatever they were saying. Put yourself as a dead person before God. And God will make you to see, to, to see victory. There's a victory here. This week, when you feel you are down, just sing a song. Up dancing alone. You will realize that you are overcoming. One of, one of my brothers here, he was saying, I'm a cultic person. I'm a cultic person. He said, he told me, but I won't mention his name. He said, he was expecting his payment. And he says, people, they don't know your God. He don't know your God. And he says, this woman like, he didn't want to pray. He said, he began to sing a song. He began to sing a song. When he was busy, he had three, three. When he checked, he realized he paid. It is time now that you forget problems. Just about, I want to forget my problems. I began to praise him. How I many of you are going to praise him? Uh, you are going to praise him. Let me give you another thing. Hey, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Look at this Psalm 100. Psalm 100. From verse 1. I want my enemies to carry on, but I want to go. I'll carry on praising him. And God is going to work. Because soon, they will praise my God. Read from verse 1, Mama. Shout joyfully to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and delight. Come before his presence with joy full singing. Know and fully recognize with gratitude that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us, not we ourselves, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with a, with a, with a song of thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him. Bless and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy and loving kindness are as everlasting. His faithfulness endures to all generations. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you this. Your God loved noise. Your God loved noise. Your God, ah, noise. But it must be a holy noise of praising Him. 
Sometimes make a fasting of prison. Not of promotion. Where you are just praising him. Enjoying him. But the second day, you will hear a testimony. I don't know if you are hearing me. The first day, it will be like, what are you doing? The second day, there's going to be a breakthrough. If you shout, you shout, you have God in loud noise. I don't know if you are hearing me. It's provoked by when he hear the noise he say what is happening let us go there look what happened to Paul and Silas when their chains were so strong they could not look at the pains and the stripes on their body they began to make a noise and sing to God and God began to hear them and say oh yeah I'm here right now. The chains can't hold you. Because it's only praise. That brings him to the place. When he's on the place, everything must be fixed in order. No one can be chained before him. No one can be sick before him. I want us to try to get and see what will happen to us. Our God love noise. I don't know if you're hearing me. Today when we make noise, I will tell you the noise we are going to make. That noise is going to bring breakthrough. Testimonies. Victory. In our lives. If you're hearing me say it. Read 1 Peter 2. Read 1 Peter 2. Read from verse 9 to 10. Uh, yes. But uh -huh. you are a chosen race. Yes. A royal priesthood. A consecrated nation. A special people for God's own possession. So that you may proclaim the excellencies meaning the wonderful deeds and virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Listen, how do we proclaim what we don't have? How do we proclaim that God is good when, when we don't see his goodness? Look at God chose us so that people around us they must see that our God is good. Are you hearing me? God chose us that people must proclaim and even us when we talk, we talk about something which is there. He chose us. We are not just mere people. We are his people. If we are his people, people must know him. You know what happened by the time of Israelites? The Bible says, when they were approaching Jericho, People of Jericho were afraid that they are coming. Always when they hear, they begin to have, they know what this God has done. Has done for them. They were afraid. People, if they don't praise our God, they must fear our God. I don't know if you're hearing me. Whoever does not praise our God will see something missing. Will fear our God. When you fear something, you say, I'm afraid of this. Already you are praising. Then they will talk big things about our God. See some people here. That this year, people will talk big things about your God through your life. We are chosen so that people will see. They have to see. You know what happened? 
when I found the scripture, I read it. I can I proclaim that I'm rich? I'm saying the rich God went poor. How do I proclaim that? In heaven, there are mentioned. And, and the Bible says, whatever is done well, it must be done well. Whatever is done on earth must be done in heaven. How can I go and manage my share in heaven when I'm failing here or there? You know, I was seeing a story in my life. Someone was taken to the house. And I mentioned where there's electricity. But he was coming from village. He wanted to make fire. He went out and searched for the house. Because the mentality is of the village. If truly we are serving God, who wants to give us the house in It must start here. I don't know if you are hearing me. If we know our God is big, it's not big there, it must start here. Do you remember what happened to Elijah? He was tired of people who were praising God and Ashtarot. And he said, listen, if God is God, worship him. If if Ashtarot is God, I will worship him. But today, because I'm alive, let's see who is God. 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 If he's God, he says that God who answer my prayer. Let's see if he will answer. Our God answers. We need to praise him. When we praise him, we know he answers. This year, God will answer you. I say he will answer you. He will answer you. He will answer you to prove his God. To prove his alive. Do you know what happened to Hannah too? Hannah. The second wife. I said Hannah too. When what happened when Penina was in such a way? When Penina was in such a way, she's like a Penina was in such a way. Look when she cried before God. Look when God answered her. Go and read Samuel chapter 2. Go and read from verse 1. And see her praise God. As the one who is a parent has given birth to many children. The one who was poor because you are God who reigns the person to be rich and the rich to be poor we are serving the living God who can exchange things people are laughing at you those who are laughing at you is about to take what they have and give it to you I don't know if you are hearing it yeah, I want to praise this God. Because I know he does things. Are you ready to praise him? This week is a week of praising God. It's a week of praising God. You just don't talk about what they do. Don't talk about what is happening in the world. Don't talk about people who are talking against you. Just praise him. You will hear something. I say you will hear something. God is about to answer you. It's God who answers. Praise his gifts. When you praise him, 
You are placed in a place where answers will search for you. I don't know if you are hearing me. I have seen some people here. You will receive answers I say you will receive answers I say you receive answer this week. 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 That car, that is delayed. It will come this month. I say it will come this month. That business that was forming. People in your family. They are about to praise your God. I am hearing them say. Your God is alive. Your God is alive. Listen. For them to praise God. I don't know if you are hearing me. How many of you want to see the family praising God? Are you sure, sure, sure? Let's read another scripture. I will close if I give you many scriptures. Yes. But let's go back again to the same chapter. Chapter 11. Let's put it. Two. Let's go back to chapter two. I think I will stop there because of time. Just read the verse. Keep your behavior excellent among the unsaved Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Conduct yourself honorably with graciousness and integrity, so that for whatever reason they may slander you. As evil doers, yet by observing your good deeds, they may instead come to glorify God in the day of visitation when He looks upon them with mercy. Did you hear that? Amen. God is about to look at them with mercy. I want to tell you how He works. Let me just give an example that is. This man is your enemy. And this enemy is fighting me or you. When God wants to give this man mercy, he blesses me with what he thinks. When God visits me, this man says, This man won't have a car. When God gives me mercy, his expectation come to me. I don't know if you're hearing me. Listen, we need to pray for God to give mercy to your enemies. When He give them mercy, He take what they think is the best for them. And He give them to me. The mercy of God for them is to make them to know that he is with you. When I'm living, when he's oppressing me, the Bible says, I must live in a way that he and other people who don't know God must not slander my God. My character how I live must be the issue that he must not fight for. But by the time of this day, he will take what he is that it will come to him and it will come to him. It's about to happen to you. See that? 